Okay, good afternoon, everybody. We'll go ahead and get started. A um, couple comments um, <clears throat> concerning the, our recent ball game. We're really pleased with the uh, start. It was going to be important for us to, to come off the field with a, a good victory. Uh, we're pleased with the win. Um, I think New Mexico State's a good football program. We want to wish Coach Martin the best, and we're convinced they're going to win a lot of football games this year. A uh, couple injury reports, I would say Austin Ford is doubtful uh, for the Washington State game. Uh, we are pleased to say that Alonzo Velasquez, I would say, is probably probable or even better than that. So um, <clears throat> uh, some notes about the ball game. Uh, first of all, uh, really pleased that uh, we established a running game, established the line of scrimmage that was going to be important for us. I thought our running backs ran hard. We were assignment bound and uh, we came off the ball and, and that's always going to you know, be a, hopefully a trademark for us as we move forward. Uh, Tyler Vanderwall, you know, he started out the game really well. I think he was seven for seven and they maybe had a little dip during the course of the game, but really pleased for a freshman quarterback, you know, in starting game, particularly on the road with a team that had won their bowl game. It was a big ball game. I thought Tyler really showed up well. So we're really pleased with that. I thought our defense was very disruptive. Um, they established field position. Uh, we tackled well. Uh, we ran to the ball well uh, and played with a great deal of energy. So we're pleased with that. Uh, and I, we won the kicking game. So if you total those things up, I think it was a pretty convincing win. While some people on the outside may like a lot more scores, you know, I was pleased <clears throat> for the most part with our first team defense. Uh, you know, we were holding the shutout and uh, creating a field position. The time for possession was in our favor, and so we're pleased with that. We'd like to have that formula in the future, but we've got much work to do. Uh, but I've always believed this, a football team typically improves their most uh, improvement comes between their first and their second game, and so uh, this is an opportunity for us to improve, and we have a lot of work to do. Um, so our, our players are back. We, hey, we started out with some lifting today, and we'll have a light practice, and get ready for an excellent uh, uh, game uh, against Washington State. Washington State, uh, first of all, I have a great deal of respect for Coach Leach. I've coached against him a, on a couple occasions through the years. He enjoys a great national reputation. And I think their football team has transitioned from a team into a really good program. You can see the vision uh, that Coach Leach has in their recruiting philosophy, uh, the direction that they're going. Uh, they've been a perennial bowl game team. And so you're not just dealing with a team, you're dealing with a program. Uh, I know the, their defensive coordinator, uh, Tracy uh, Clays, very well. I can I promise you this, uh, their defensive players will know what they're doing. Uh, they will be assignment bound and they will play really hard. Also know Coach Spurrier, um, you know, I had a chance when I was a young coach at Duke, he was on our team for a while. And, uh, you know, I know that when he was at Oklahoma, he. He and Coach Leach worked extensively together. So uh, you've got an experienced coaching staff with a whole collection of other guys. Well, what the makings are is a great college football game. There's a lot to play for. It's early in the year. I know our players are excited. Our coaches are excited. And so uh, at this time, I'll open up any questions anybody might have. Craig, with, with Austin being doubtful, is that a good sign that it's not maybe not season ending? Or do you mm -hmm. know much more about it? Or is it kind of a positive that it's just doubtful at this point? Uh, I would say uh, that's a correct assessment. You know, initially, uh, you know, it would be come down to a knee strain. There's probably a more technical term uh, than that. Uh, but, I, it, you know, they're going to go through the uh, do an MRI and all those things. But the initial assessment is doubtful. Uh, he's moving around, but a little gingerly. And so uh, I just, you know, unless he goes sees the wizard, I don't think he's going to be playing this week. But uh, I to say that he's going to be lost for the year, I, I would be surprised by that. Coach, with uh, cash out this game, just just what does Adam bring to that position? Obviously, I know he's a, a veteran on this team who's, who's uh, Adam Pillipole stepping in for cash. This okay, week. yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, I, Adam is a really bright player. He's played safety here in the past. He's put on some lean muscle mass. He's got a great understanding of linebacker. And so uh, he's played. He played quite a bit last week. And, uh, you know, we really feel comfortable with him coming in and playing this week. After you looked at film with your offensive line with three redshirt freshmen, were you did they grade well? Were you were you pleased with what mm -hmm. you what you got from your from your offensive line? Also? Yeah, we were, Robert. I mean, the results. I know our running backs ran hard, but a lot of times I thought the line of scrimmage uh, was uh, was moved, and uh, we were 
fairly assignment bound. There's still some some things we have to clean up. Uh, you know, maybe from the naked eye, maybe some of the fans couldn't see, but we certainly did. Uh, but overall, I mean, that was a, that was a point of emphasis that started last spring. You know, we were way off as far as our ability to run. I think New Mexico State has some good defensive front players, and so. Uh, you know, credit our strength staff. Uh, I thought they did a great job preparing those guys. And uh, while we had some new players in there, they certainly didn't play like they were new. And uh, so we're pleased with that. It's a really good start for us. But now, uh, this next crew we're going to face is going to be a little bit different. And, uh, you know, every week gets a little bit bigger, and this will be a bigger ball game and, and I think a better opponent. Coach, how does this uh, Washington State team compared to the one you guys played back in, in 2015? Mm -hmm. Is it still pretty similar to what they tried to do? Well, some of the schematics are, are the same now. You know, defensively, they're going to have a different flavor. Um, but offensively, you know, there's a lot of things that Coach Leach has done through the years. <clears throat> I can remember calling defenses when he was calling plays at Texas Tech. While there's some differences, there's a lot of similarities. So they have a philosophy. Um, you know, it's going to be a great opportunity. We, uh, I thought we were outmanned um, the last time we were up there. We were going to need to have, you know, a, a plus three or four turnover margin, and that didn't come about. And I think Washington State had their way with us. I can remember that. Um, you know, we're in hopes that uh, we've got it. I know this. We're a different program now than what we were then, how we stack up. Uh, that's why our fans need to come to the game and see. Craig, yes. you, go, go over here, the guy in the cowboy hat. You. Um, Last week, it didn't seem like the defense did a lot of spec. They were pretty vanilla in their mm -hmm. approach. Was that by design, or was mm -hmm. that just because that's the way the game led it? Well, if I give it all, I'm going to tell, tell a bunch of secrets, and you're trying to bait me here, Tracy. Um, you know, I think what happened during the course of the game, uh, we had pretty good control of the game. And so as a result, you kind of danced with who brung you up. Things were working pretty good, and it's no, no sense trying to out-trick ourselves. I thought our guys. You know, I was really pleased. It's probably the most speed that I've seen our defense have since I've been our head coach. And uh, so our guys were positioned well and they played well. So part of it was design and then part of it was how the game unfolded. Craig, you've been a part of some really good defenses, mm -hmm. either the coordinator or as a head coach. Does this one have a chance to be in that special group of the ones you coached previously? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I guess why? A um, couple things. First of all, um, you know, a lot of experience back at key positions. When you say key positions, you're usually looking at kind of in a baseball turn to be really strong down the middle. You know, whether it's a defensive tackle uh, like Sid or Johanna, or a middle linebacker like uh, Logan, or safeties like Marcus and uh, Andrew Winger, uh, that's pretty strong down the middle. And then you've got some flank guys like Carl Granderson, and I think we've got some good ex explosion uh, from our corners. So. There's good athleticism, there's some maturity, a lot of experience. Our whole coaching staff's back. Um, you know, they're hungry. Uh, they, want to, they, they got a taste of being good last year. I think they want to take another step forward. Uh, but that's, that's, that could be characterized of our whole football team. Uh, but certainly, we have more experience on, on defense than we do offense. And particularly in opening games, uh, it was going to be important for us to leverage our defense, which we did. You know, we wanted to make sure that our opponents always played on the long field and make sure that, you know, there was probably a couple times I'm sure I got some some gruntled, uh, why, why aren't you going for it on fourth down or why aren't you doing this? Well, I know this. I, I look at those guys and say, hey, punt the ball inside the 10. Good luck, Jack Buck, on trying to go 90 yards on our number ones. And so that was the plan. Craig, you know, with Trey Woods moving to the Back in the back, the elder statesman with the glasses. Just curious how good it must feel to come home after you open the season on the road. Is that a question? Is that a question or a comment? It's a question. It's a promoted. How good does it feel? It feels great, and you know? uh, it does. You know, there's no place like home. Uh, a War Memorial Stadium, uh, since I've been our head coach, I believe has transitioned. You know, it's gone to uh, where you have games there to where now the crowd is actively involved. It's been great to see our student body uh, show up. They energize the stadium. Um, you know, it'll be a wonderful, uh, I believe it's a 1.30 kickoff. The sun will be out. Uh, there's nothing better early in the fall in Laramie. And so uh, I'm in hopes that our fans are excited about it. I know our football players are really excited about it. So um, it has a makings of being an outstanding atmosphere with two really good football teams. Uh, that are going to uh, go after it on the gridiron. So 
uh, feels great, Kevin, to be at home. Great, but Trey Woods' transition to uh, defensive end, I mean, he was in the mm -hmm. rotation, he got a sack, certainly not assuming he's got it all figured mm -hmm. out, but has he surprised you of how far, how he's kind of picked things up to this point? Mm -hmm. and, and what have you liked from him, at least thus far, is he still learning the position? He's learning the position. Um, you know, he started out as a linebacker, and so, quite frankly, a lot of times our middle linebackers and our defensive ends, while they their assignments are different, sometimes the physical composition, their body types are very similar. And uh, what we like, he's got good length. He, uh, he can speed rush, he's got good strength. I wouldn't say great strength, but he's got, he, he, can, he can cover a lot of ground and that puts an offensive tackle, you know, that, that, uh, that point back there that you're shooting for, he can, he can get there in a hurry. And it was good to see him uh, hop in and, and get a sack. I also know that uh, if you looked at our tape, when Nico broke off the long run, uh, there was nobody more excited than Trey Woods. He almost got flagged because he got outside the box because he was excited. And I think that that's an, those are indications of things that I see uh, that the team is bigger than itself. And when those unselfish um, uh, physical demonstrations come out, we've got a lot to, to work with. And he's, he's a good looking guy on the hook. I mean, and he's going he's gonna to put a lot of weight on and, and uh, we're really excited. We think that's a great move for him. Coach, I know you've been a part of some big wins against, you know, autonomous five teams in the past. Um, just how much have those wins meant to, you know, those mm -hmm. teams that got those wins, even though, you know, they don't directly affect, you know, conference standings mm -hmm. and things like that? Well, I think it's another step forward in our in our program. Um, I, you know, I, I, I know you hear all this talk about it, and I appreciate you calling it an autonomous five because you say power fives. I think there's power programs, and, and as I alluded to at the beginning of this press conference, Washington State has moved up, uh, moved up the ladder. They're they're a nationally recognized program, and they have good players and they're well coached. And so it's going to be a, a great opportunity for our football team. Yes, Coach. Given the wide open nature of New Mexico State and had and, and what Coach Leak likes to do, mm -hmm. how beneficial was that in terms mm -hmm. of your defense kind of seeing an open passing attack last week and ready for this week? Well, there's certainly some similarities. Uh, you know, some of the formations and the personnel groupings would lend themselves to say, okay, you know, you're more acclimated to that as opposed to, say, like uh, playing Air Force. Uh, however, the, a lot of the schemes are different and the players are different. So every week is a new week. You know, our players are going to need to erase uh, some of the things that they, you know, they, they, they learned and applied during the game and kind of. Um, re-engineer uh, their brain to get assignment bound. But, you know, some you, you're not talking about uh, three backs in the backfield and a fullback and a kickout block. You're, you're talking about different concepts. So there's more similarities than differences. Coach, I know Coach Leach likes to tell a lot of stories. It's mm -hmm. a pretty unique individual. Do you have any Mike Leach stories by chance or, or you anything? You know what, I, Coach, Coach and I are friends, and uh, the things that he and I talked about are going to be stayed between Coach Leach and I. <laughs> yep. I think he's good for college football. I do. I think he's really good for college football. You know, their program does stuff right. And, uh, um, you know, the, I, I appreciate his uh, uh, energy to the game. And, and uh, we know each other fairly well. Not super well. I know Tracy actually better than I know Coach Leach. Uh, but great deal of respect. So I'm going to not – I have no comments. <laughs> the longer I talk, the more I say something. <laughs> Any other questions? Coach, you mentioned you see the most improvement between week one and week two. What areas specifically do you see that improvement? Well, first of all, if you look at the number of times I called timeout, um, those things need to be corrected. Uh, some of the other things, they're just first game nuances with some young players. And as much as you try to uh, um, replicate all that stuff in scrimmages in practice. And I thought we did a fairly good job being clean. We, first of all, I was really pleased with no turnovers. Uh, but, you know, some of those things that we've got to get cleaned up. If we have a chance to be Washington State, you know, those things got to be cleaned up. There were some blocking assignments that were, that were missed. There was a couple defensive assignments that were missed. It really have nothing to do with our physical ability but it has everything to do with our execution. I do get frustrated sometimes when coaches uh, sometimes are critiquing players because they say they didn't execute, they didn't execute, they didn't execute. Well, who in the heck's job is it to teach them to execute? I mean, that's a co that's why you got coach on your shirt. And so there's some things that we have to clean up as coaches and as players to give ourselves a chance to win. 
Uh, yes. No, we're trying to track on that earlier question, but I guess what I was getting at is um, Washington State's offense is a lot more wide open than a lot of offenses. Mm -hmm. and a lot more of a challenge, you think, for your defense than, than some of the teams you'll play? Yeah, you know what, uh, Tracy, sometimes uh, schools get in a cookie cutter approach. Uh, in our league, however, uh, there's a lot of different offenses. I would say this offense that uh, Coach Leach has is very unique, and I think the question came up earlier about the similarities between uh, them and New Mexico State. Some of the, the personnel groupings are similar, but the schemes and the concepts are significantly different, and they execute them, uh, Tracy, so well. I mean. They, they execute things uh, on a dime. And I think one thing that I have appreciated about Coach Leach through the years is uh, he takes things that appear to be very complicated and are complicated for opposing defenses and he makes them simple. Uh, what, I, what I see, whether, you know, when he was at Oklahoma or at Texas Tech and some of the things that I see now, those, those concepts are there. He has a, he's a really bright guy. Uh, you know what, <clears throat> I know this, the Attorney General at the, the state of Nebraska went to law school with him. The Attorney General at Nebraska was my college roommate. So, um, you know, Coach Leach's got a law degree um, and he's a bright guy and he utilizes it. But he, he doesn't try to think, he doesn't try to out trick everybody to show how smart he is. And uh, so there's brilliance here. Craig, how much do you appreciate a coach like Mike Leach that will do a home and home like this instead mm -hmm. of, nope, you're just coming right. out to our place? Well, um, first of all, uh, I want to say thanks to Tom Berman. Uh, he negotiated the, uh, the, uh, the contracts, but I, I do think this is an indication of, of uh, the football program at the University of Wyoming. Um, you know, we're in position where we have an opportunity to do home and homes with uh, nationally recognized schools. You can get on an airplane and play about anybody you want to any time of the year. Uh, but when you're able to do home and homes, it gives it gives you an understanding of the uh, maybe the national recognition of our program. And I think that's one thing that you know you hear these group of five terms used. Uh, you know, I'm going to pound the table for the Mountain West. I mean, there's a reason why Stanford went to San Diego State. There was a reason why Nebraska has been here. There's a reason why Oregon's been here. There's a reason why Washington State's here. Our, our conference is a nationally recognized conference, and so as a result of that, you're going to be able to have some home and homes like this. And so I, you know, I applaud Washington State, but it's not like uh, they're doing a lot of favors. I mean, we got two good football teams are going to play Saturday, and we're excited about playing them in Laramie. Coach, at quarterback is fairly similar to last week, where you know it sounds like they haven't mm -hmm. announced the guy yet. You just got to be ready for whoever. Yeah, that's that's Coach Leach there too. You know. Um, you know, I've kind of been monitoring what's going on there. You know, we're, we've watched a lot of tape on a lot of the different guys and whoever they have there. Uh, their, their, their abilities may change a little bit, but really it's not like you're going to see a significant amount or a departure for their, from their schematics. Um, and so we got to get prepared to see what they do. I know this, they have really good players with really good coaches. Um, I think we got really good players and really good coaches too. And so from that standpoint, uh, stay tuned. It's going to be a heck of a ball game. With that.